face that this world has forgotten. Hmm. What is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Bitter. And this week, we're going to look upon the, what I would believe to say, the beast rock types of, uh, well, future generations, generation 7, though, of course, being brought into generation 2 and 6 in Tyranitar, the Godzilla Pokemon versus the Dinosaur Transirus Rex Tyrantrum from, of course, generation 6. And yeah, these guys are actually somewhat on par with one another, and while Tarantrum has been on this series before versus Rhyperior, it is now once again time to rise or challenge and see whether or not it is on par with the monster that began it all in, of course, the Godzilla Pokemon in Tyranitar. So we're going to start off with Tyranitar first, since it was introduced first, and talk about, of course, its typing and weakness and resistance is bring to the table, and of course, Tyranitar overall. So Tyranitar actually sport a bond one that is a very very exclusive type being, being dark and rock. What that basically means is that we resist the likes of dark, fire, flying, ghost, normal and poison and have a complete immunity in psychic. And uh, while the weaknesses are very staggered, and it should be said that we have a lot of resistances to work with, for being the combination it is, it actually works and brings a lot to the table. Now the weaknesses here are fairly common. Sadly, one should say, and most stand actually for rock type, though the combination of dark really doesn't help it because it isn't a defensive typing. Uh, so, we have bug, fairy, grass, ground, steel, water, and very weak to fighting. And for the longest time here, uh, pseudo legendaries did have a four times effective hit towards them. Tyrantor being, of course, the lines of the fighting, and uh, while well, this could be sporting to be a, a, a bad thing, it definitely should be stated here that the combination we see here in Dogfire, Flying, Ghost, Normal, Poison are a usual common trait and combination, so it is a defensive typing and there are things here that force it out, but Tyranitar doesn't necessarily take that much offense for actual super effective hits, unless it is very weak to the fighting hits it gets towards it, but overall I would say Tyranitar is a very good defensive typing and I have also very clear indication of when to of course switch out. And the reason I say super effective hits isn't necessarily a bad thing towards Tyranitar, it is for one reason, look at those stats, we have 100 in HP, 110 in defense and 100 again in its special defense, it's a bulky Pokemon, it's a very bulky Pokemon, very few Pokemon actually stand to this combination of defenses, and look at that, attacks at 144, yeah that's scary, 95 in special attack, it's actually fairly alright, it does pretty much make sure that it can use its special attack, and that's a very strong trait for a Pokemon that is that defensive and offensively capable. Uh, speed is the only thing holding it back, definitely isn't peaking there, if anything, 6 to 1, yeah, it's a slow Pokemon, it's definitely not going to go away, but you have to bulk to pull that off. Now, the reason one should definitely mention uh, Tyranitar as a very viable option for defensive capabilities is because of its ability in Sandstream. Unnerved should definitely be stated here, if you want to capitalize on that, it makes sure that you can use a berry versus it. It's an interesting concept for people for a Pokemon that could carry likes of Culverberry for possible pursuit trapping, but also overall, it definitely ruins the likes of Snorlax, for example, with Figgy Recycle. So it's a viable option, but Sandstream is the better option because it boosts your special defense by 50%, making this Pokemon pretty much impossible to one it kill unless you hit by likes of Focus Blast. But overall, Tyranitar is very scary and extreme viable due to this very reason alone. But the good stuff of course doesn't end there, we have a very very thick move pool. And what I mean thick is we have a lot of things going on here. Tyranitar, much like Nido King and Wigglytuff and stuff like that, learns a lot of things and a lot of things that could be niche and viable depending on the situation that it does carries. So with this in mind we're gonna of course cover that. We have the Fang moves, the Thunder Fang, Ice Fang, Fire Fang, not going to be the best move, but it does get it. Rock Slide, Dark Pulse, Dragon Claw, Roar. It is a viable fixer to some extent, and having Roar is always viable. Ice Beam, Smackdown, and Smackdown definitely work in conjunction with the likes of Earthquake, for example. Thunderbolt, Acidic Earthquake, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Rock Tomb, Air Lease, Brick Break, Shadow Claw, Stone Edge, which is going to be your most viable stab move on the rock side. Thunder Wave, in case you want to nerf something and be able to have speed, Surf, Pursuit, which is one of the best options towards this Pokemon, it is the strongest. 
pursue Trapper because he does deal very well with the high tier Psychic type due to the extra special defense boost in its sand stream and then of course being able to not only soak a hit but definitely retaliate with pursuit and it usually can do that unhindered stealth rock while the defensive tyrantor is not the most viable pokemon it is able to pull up stealth rocks and it is a viable option for it if you want to have a filler move outrage do not use that dragon dance while dragon dance is better on the mega tyrantor dragon dance here is also a very viable option while it does get rock polish the extra boost in its attack really does make this Pokemon very, very, very scary. And then Jolly Dragon Dance Tyranitar can actually outspeed 100 base 110. And that's a seriously viable option if you want to consider that. It definitely isn't as speedy as, like I said, the Mega Tyranitar form, but it's still a viable option. An extra attack in already very high 144, yeah, it's okay. And of course, with this very, very high bulk, Tyranitar is more often than not able to actually Dragon Dance because it uses, doesn't necessarily die. Uh, Iron Tail, very viable to get it with Iron Head. I would say Iron Tail is better with C moves in mind. Low Kick, yeah, that's for Snorlax. That's for any Pokemon that want to try to force it out. It can pull something like that up. We get the Elemental Punches, which are the, move, the moves you're going to use more than Fang moves. Who cares about flinching when you do more damage in Ice Fang, Thunder Punch, and of course Fire Fang. We have superpower in case you don't want to necessarily go for the likes of a brick break or one should really stage any other low kick move. Um, Aqua Tail, very viable for the likes of Pokemon that um, you want to see move against, and of course, the likes of Ray Peter you really can't be facing. It's a viable option, so I definitely wouldn't cons I would consider Aqua Tail if you need to, of course, your ending hard struggle. Uh, block, uh, lock your opponent into individual setup, always nice. Earth Power. It's a viable option if you want to go for special attacking moves, and of course, Focus Punch, which is the strongest C move you just get. And it can use the likes of Substitute to be able to pull that off, but overall, Focus Punch is mainly there for if you're facing the likes of Beware, who could actually be walling you out. Well, it isn't a viable option. Being able to actually go over its ability for the actually C move, yeah, that's kind of scary and definitely a viable option towards Tyranitar. But overall, one can say that Tyranitar is a jack of all trades, it is a switch. My switch army knife basically it can do a lot of things and it does it really well while its primary use is to be a pursuit trapper it is able to do a lot of damage naturally and of course it's rock stab and uh, actually even dark stab are both viable options depending on what you want to do and it has the filler moves to actually force out whatever could be hindering it ferrothorn is usually a pokemon that can come in on it and being able to capitalize on fire punch or fire blast make actually this a good silver pokemon one if not the best rock type in the game and it's whether or not tarantrum actually can compare and to some extent i definitely say that tarantrum has something that tarantar is missing which makes this matchup really really interesting so let's go over actually tarantars or tarantrum i should say is typing and as tyranitar tyrantrum do cover an exclusive typing combination that has yet to be revisited of course being only generation six but still uh, in Dragon and of course Rock Titan and uh, yeah those two type of combination doesn't necessarily complement each other but at the same time we do get a lot of resistances that are interesting we have strong resisting in Fire which resists Electric, Flying, Normal and Poison and we are weak to sadly Dragon, Fairy, Fighting Ground, Ice, Steel so a lot of weaknesses here actually are in born with the both typing so nothing here is to be we let out or of course being forced out there aren't necessarily anything here outside of actually water and gem grass that the dragon typing just actually help out with the rock time but overall i would say tarantrum is to be considered not as a defensive typing as tarantar but it still has a lot of resistances that it can be capitalized on so it's not a bad type of combination but definitely isn't as i would say defensive as it should have been considered the type of combination it is that said though it doesn't have any four times weaknesses which is a very very good thing because this means that this Pokemon at least can capitalize on its stamina on more situation than a rock and dark combination can. So with that said let's go over Tyrantrum stats. Now Tyrantrum sport a very 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 solid combination of stats to be completely honest. It have very very clear spiking and low point but overall I would say they're fairly balanced. 82 in HP, which is fairly high, just not as high as Tyranitar. 121 in attack, which is also very high, just not as high as Tyranitar. 119 in defense, yeah, it's bulkier physically, 
96 and 59 in special attack and special defense, which, yeah, those are definitely lower, but 71 in speed definitely foretells one thing, this Pokemon is speedier than Tranitar by 10 base speed. And while of course 10 base speed doesn't sound like a lot, it definitely should be stated here that it, that it does make sure to outspeed a lot more defensive threats than Tranitar ever can, and Rocket and Strongjaw is his abilities both are very very viable options. Strongjaw of course boosting your Fang moves to be able to actually hit with Stab moves in mind with a 50% boost which is very good depending on the situation and of course Rockhead is one of those really really good abilities because this Pokemon gets an attack that really just make it one of the most ferocious rock times in the whole game so Rockhead is usually the one you prefer but Strongjaw is a very viable option and definitely for the league concept it definitely stands out a bit more actually. So when it comes to the move pool however it isn't as broad as the likes of Tyranitar but it still does get a lot. We have Stealth Rocks, we have Head Smash and Head Smash I'm just gonna say it straight out is Head Smash is the ideal combination with Rockhead definitely one of the strongest combination in the game making it able to not get recall still hit with a 225 based powered rock hit there aren't that many Pokemon that take that hit well and trust me it does sting Charm uh, it's a viable option if you want to whittle Pokemon down Crunch definitely there for the fact moves and strong joy in mind but just make sure that Psyche type isn't that actually able to switch in on this Dragon Claw very viable option for the likes of Stab Earthquake decent filler move Rock Polish, I wouldn't consider it, but it does get it. Stone Edge has nothing of a head smash. Uh, Brick Break, great filler move. Curse, same thing there, great filler move if you want to go with Trick Room in mind. But Dragon Dance is where it's at. Dragon Dance boosts, of course, the likes of Solar Stated, attack and its speed by one point, and of course, 50% boost in that. With Tarantrum's case, it does mean that you have speed 1 and 25 base Pokemon if you are jolly, and that's a very, very, very viable option because it means that all of a sudden not only do you hit like a truck but you're speedier than one too and that is just very very scary overall and is a very viable option a more viable option I should say than Tyranitar's variant we also have the Fang moves here and while they aren't as said before as strong with strong joy mind they do shine a little bit more and um, hit actually harder than Tyranitar's punching move due to strong joy mind so all these moves very viable we have Iron Head of course also here block which yet again block does consider that you can't set up versus certain situation you said it, it is a replacement for a third move and i don't believe tarantrum cash that capability of pulling that off uh, earth power iron defense superpower yet again decent filler move send headbutt another move that it has over tyranitar and can hit poison type super effective damage dragon pulse when to capitalize on that outrage which is usually want to want to go with with Dracium c Actually, together with Dragon Dance and Head Smash, it just brings it down to one of the very, very tough individual situations to be facing. And of course, Iron Tail is the last filler move. But overall, Tyrantrum's stance really does complement its move pool. It definitely is a Pokemon that can hit super effectively versus a lot of matchup. While it isn't too good in the higher tiers in Smogon, it has a very strong viability in actually the league tiers, mainly because it has a lot of filler moves to get a very, very strong setup, a very strong speed tier, and good abilities to hurt cores very, very effectively. But overall, I definitely say that Trantrum is a very, very cool concept for a rock type, which hasn't actually till generation two already been introduced is whether or not we can push the boundaries for a dual setup to actually work. And I definitely believe Tarantrum did bring that to the table and definitely improved on what Tyranitar really was. It is whether or not what it brings to the table is more than Tyranitar brings overall. And that I think is a very interesting dialogue because I never actually um, talked about this before because they do two different things yet have the Dragon Dance in common. So whether or the niches around them are enough to settle between the two. And I think I come to the conclusion that would settle both me and hopefully you guys too. So if this matchup has foretold anything, we talked a lot about what Dragon Dancing does for these two Pokemon, and it's very clear just by dialogue alone that Tarantrum, in my opinion here, are better Dragon Dancing here. It is a Pokemon that reliably can set up a lot easier because it hasn't as many weaknesses, and let's face it, it does hit a lot harder than Tarantor does due to what it brings to the table. In a league concept, it's a very strong variant here. You definitely can't be disregarded at Tarantrum, is it definitely improved the Dragon Dancer and overall a stronger Rock-type than Tyranitar are. That said though, it is 
a lower peer league pick. It is one of the better rock types, definitely a league concept, but it definitely should be stated here, it doesn't necessarily bring that much more to the table than a really, really strong Dragon Dancer and a very hard Rock MC hitter, or of course, Drake MC hitter. Tyranitar is sadly, or for the better of it, a lot more capable than Tyranitar really could be. Tyranitar, while it doesn't hit as hard, it is a Pokemon that has still to this stage changing the meta for the better. It does make sure the psychic type all and running rampant. It's a Pokemon that can switch into things, even though it has a lot of weaknesses. Its special defense to get it with Sandstream is something that is unrivaled. This Pokemon is a pure tank, and while it has Dragon Dance as an option, it is not the reason to use it. You use it for pursuit, and you use it to actually hail teammates. Tarantrum is more of a soul wolf. It definitely does work really well like that. It is individually really strong, but Tarantrum is individually really strong too, but is a very tanky Pokemon that can support a whole team very, very, very well because it does resolve a lot of things and making other Pokemon actually stronger for it. And overall, I would say that Tarantrum, while a very, very solid rock type, it just isn't comparing to Tyranitar. Tyranitar is a superb rock dark type combination. And while the typing doesn't look to be the case to be the better, it very much is. And it has a lot to do with the option that Tyranitar brings to the table. And as stated before already, it has a mixed move pull that does push the special attack even further higher, making Tyranitar one of those really, really great versatile Pokemon. And even if Tyranitar has options, Tyranitar not only has the option, but it also surpass Tyranitar in so many ways. So with all this said, yeah, it's very clear that Tyranitar is the better between these two. Though with that said, I really just gonna give Tarantrum, you know, all the credit it needs because I said before, it is the stronger Dragon Dancer. There is no way of going around that. And while it isn't as strong as I would say the Mega Tarantars Dragon Dancing set, it is very clear that Tarantrum was a great revise of, of course, what this type of combination can be. It just didn't compare with the likes of Sandstream. While it hits hard, let's face it, Tyranitar has the option to possibly hit harder. But the thing is that really make Tyranitar stand out is that it's bulkier. It can't stay in against special offensive matchup, which is something Tyranitar simply can't because it likes to be able to pull it off. And while it doesn't have as many weaknesses and definitely having that clearing four times weakness, it is very clear that Tyranitar just doesn't hold up as well as Tyranitar. And it was very easy for me to say that Tyranitar wins because it has the option to be a lot more than just a Dragon Dancer. And that is why it wins the matchup. So with that said guys, what do you guys think and what Pokemon do you think you want to see here on next? Because next week we're going to look upon a very cool matchup that I actually don't believe which one is going to win. So with that said, thank you for of course watching and uh, for those who watch on New Year's Eve, Happy New Year guys. And as always really, take care.